of an adjacent wall and wraps an arm around Agent Musker's neck and drags her, screaming, back into the wall with it. Moments later, the floor beneath Agent Alum begins to dissolve, and he slowly descends into SCP-106's pocket dimension. Not sure if they were frustrated or happy that they could finally see 106, they gave out hysterical laughter. Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you a SCP Foundation Heater Class Object, SCP-106. SCP-106, also known as The Old Man, appears to be an elderly humanoid with a general appearance of advanced decomposition. This appearance may vary, but the rotting quality is observed in all forms. 106 is not exceptionally agile and will remain motionless for days at a time, waiting for prey. Basically, if 106 has any reduction in activity or an increase in compliance, it should be treated as an inducement strategy prior to its active action and should be dealt with on this premise. 106 is also capable of scaling any vertical surface and can remain suspended upside down indefinitely. When attacking, it will attempt to incapacitate prey by damaging major organs, muscle groups, or tendons, then pull disabled prey into its pocket dimension. 106 appears to prefer human prey items in the 10 to 25 years of age bracket. SCP-106 causes a corrosion effect in all solid matter it touches engaging a physical breakdown in materials several seconds after contact. This is observed as rusting, rotting, and cracking of materials, and the creation of a black, mucus-like substance similar to the material coating SCP-106. This effect is particularly detrimental to living tissues and is assumed to be a pre-digestion action. Corrosion continues for six hours after contact, after which the effect appears to burn out. 106 is capable of passing through solid matter, leaving behind a large patch of its corrosive mucus. It is able to vanish inside solid matter, entering what is assumed to be a form of pocket dimension. It is then able to exit this dimension from any point connected to the initial entry point. For example, entering the inner wall of a room and exiting the outer wall, or entering a wall and exiting from the ceiling. In a record of 106's escape, as Agent Allum and Musker were joking about how they'll never know when they would be getting close to 106. And just at that moment, SCP-106 steps out of an adjacent wall and wraps an arm around Agent Musker's neck and drags her, screaming, back into the wall with it. Moments later, the floor beneath Agent Allum begins to dissolve and he slowly descends into SCP-106's pocket dimension. Not sure if they were frustrated or happy that they could finally see 106, they gave out hysterical laughter. SCP-106 will typically enter a dormant state after finishing with a lure subject. During this phase, it will remain completely motionless for up to three months. The cause for this is unknown. SCP-106 will emerge from this state in a very agitated state and will attack and abduct staff and cause gross damage to its containment cell and the site at large. SCP-106 appears to hunt and attack based on desire, not hunger. SCP-106 will attack and collect multiple prey items during a hunting behavior event, keeping many alive in the pocket dimension for extended periods of time. 106 has no determinable limit and appears to collect a random number of prey items during an event. The inner dimension accessed by SCP-106 appears to be only accessible by SCP-106. It appears that SCP-106 will play with captured prey and appears to have full control of time, space, and perception inside this dimension. It is said that the prey dragged into the pocket dimension will not die, even if it is corroded inside and outside. SCP-106 will throw it out once it's bored of it. In the event of a breach event by SCP-106, a human within the 10 to 25 years of age bracket will be prepared for recall with the compromised containment cell being replaced and restored for use. When the cell is ready, the lure subject will be injured, preferably via the breakage of a long bone, such as the femur, or the severing of a major tendon, such as the Achilles tendon. Lure subject will then be placed in the prep cell, and the sound emitted by said subject will be transmitted over the site public address system. SCP-106 will typically begin to gravitate toward the lure subject within 10 to 15 minutes after hearing the subject. Should 106 not respond to the initial broadcast, additional physical trauma is to be administered to the lure subject at 20-minute intervals until 106 responds. 
This is a picture of a Foundation personnel after being released by 106. This person disappeared for two hours and lived an hour after his release. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Have you ever heard or encountered any paranormal event? Let us know in the comment below. We will draw your story and share it with the world. Don't forget to click like, subscribe to this channel, and hit the bell. Please share it to your friends if you like this video. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.